Blake Leeper is a 33-year-old U.S. athlete who was born without the bones in his lower legs called fibulas. He had to have both legs amputated below the knees and has been wearing prostheses like these since he's been about nine months old. And learning to walk using prostheses is incredibly difficult because they can be really uncomfortable and hard to balance on, and especially when you need to use two of them. Growing up, no one ever told Blake, hey, those prostheses give you an unfair advantage. But then, Blake watched the 2008 Paralympic Games, which are sort of like the Olympics, except for all of the athletes have a physical disability. From that day on, he became obsessed with running and sprinting, and today is one of the best Paralympic sprinters in the world. He's medaled eight times in the Paralympic Games and holds U.S. and world Paralympic records. But this is where Blake's story takes an interesting turn. In 2019, Blake ran 400 meters in 44.42 seconds. That's the fastest time ever for an athlete with prosthetic legs. So fast, it qualified him to compete in the Olympic Games. But he was not allowed to compete. World Athletics, the governing body of the Olympics, determined that his prostheses gave him an unfair advantage. I know. <laughs> and that just doesn't sit right with me. How can a man born without legs have an unfair advantage? I'm a scientist and a professor who studies biomechanics, which is how people move. And I've been a runner for over 40 years. I've been curious about how devices like footwear and prostheses affect performance ever since I started running in my mom's old Nike waffle trainers when I was a kid. Today, I study how the use of running prostheses affects performance in athletes with amputations and believe that all athletes with amputations should be given access to devices that allow them to be able to run and move. I've worked with over 30 of the best Paralympic sprinters in the world and consulted with the U.S. Paralympic track and field team, NCAA, Boston Athletics, and World Athletics. I've been called to testify in numerous cases where governing bodies need to decide whether or not to allow an athlete with prosthetic legs to compete alongside a non-amputee athlete. And I've seen how many people bring their biases to these conversations about what's fair and unfair, and their assumptions about what prostheses can and cannot do. But when someone's livelihood is at stake, we need to do better than rely on our biases. We need to approach something unfamiliar with curiosity and questions. And that is exactly what my team and I have been doing. We asked, how can we determine if running prostheses provide an advantage? Now, ideally, we'd compare an athlete to themselves. First, we'd study them without amputations. Then, we'd study them with amputations using running prostheses. But obviously, no one's going to volunteer to be in that research study. <laughs> so we did the next best thing. We compared the best athletes with prosthetic legs, like Blake Leeper, to elite non-amputee sprinters. First, we determined what running prostheses are made of and how they function. So running prostheses are made of carbon fiber. That means that they're lightweight, and they behave like springs, so that athletes with amputations are essentially running on mini pogo sticks. Running prostheses do not include muscles, tendons, ligaments, or bones, so they cannot produce force or power, they cannot sense the ground, and they cannot be controlled by the user. And in fact, the overall design of running prostheses hasn't changed since 1984. Even though athletes with prosthetic legs need to use these prostheses to be able to run and sprint. To compare athletes with prosthetic legs to elite non-amputee sprinters, we analyzed the metrics that influence 400-meter performance. Acceleration out of the starting box, maximum speed, biomechanics, the effort required to run, and the rate of fatigue. We asked Blake Leeper to come to our lab at the University of Colorado Boulder for a week and perform a series of tests to compare his values to that of elite non-amputees, like his acceleration out of the starting box. 
To do this test, we set up an array of cameras around Blake to measure his movement in slow motion. We put force plates underneath each individual starting block to measure his acceleration out of the starting blocks. And then we put a radar gun behind him to measure his overall speed and time to 20 meters. We found that athletes with two prosthetic legs have 23% slower acceleration out of the starting blocks compared to non-amputees. And we found that Blake Leeper's time to run 20 meters was 40% slower than sub-elite non-amputees. This is a disadvantage that athletes with prosthetic legs cannot make up over the rest of the race. If you start slow, it's both physically and mentally hard to catch up. Next, we measured and analyzed Blake Leeper's maximum straightaway speed in biomechanics. We asked him to run on a force-measuring treadmill at a range of speeds up to his maximum speed, where maximum speed is the speed an athlete can sustain on a treadmill for 20 steps without drifting back. This video shows Blake running at his maximum speed and will start in real time and then slow down so you can take a look at his biomechanics. Prosthetics or not, you can appreciate his remarkable athleticism. But these tests confirmed other tests we've done where we found that athletes with prosthetic legs have slower maximum straightaway speeds compared to athletes with biological legs. And the use of a running prosthesis decreases the force applied to the ground by 9% and slows limb repositioning at the fastest maximum speeds compared to a biological leg. That's important because in order to run faster, an athlete should generate more force on the ground and reposition their limbs faster. Overall, Blake's maximum speed was 25.5 miles per hour, which is incredibly fast. But it's not as fast as the fastest non-amputee sprinter or as fast as the fastest speed for an athlete with just one prosthetic leg. We also measured and compared maximum curve running speed and found that athletes with prosthetic legs had slower maximum curve running speed, where both athletes run on the curve for over half of a 400-meter race. In addition, we found that the effort required to run and the rate of fatigue are similar or worse for athletes with prosthetic legs compared to athletes with biological legs. Finally, some people presume that athletes who are taller have an unfair advantage compared to shorter athletes in sprint events. Athletes with prosthetic legs can adjust and set the height of their prostheses to be a certain length, whereas non-amputee athletes can only adjust their leg length by pointing their toes. But if we break this down a little further, to run faster, an athlete needs to have a longer step length, which is the distance an athlete moves forward during a step, a faster step frequency, which is the number of steps they take per second, or both metrics. Taller athletes tend to have longer legs, and so they have longer step lengths. But longer legs are heavier than shorter legs, so they take longer to reposition and thus have slower step frequencies. All that is to say is that taller athletes may not necessarily have an advantage in maximum speed compared to shorter athletes. So what does all this mean taken together? Well, we found that athletes with prosthetic legs do not have an advantage in acceleration out of the starting blocks, maximum speed, biomechanics, the effort required to run, and the rate of fatigue. Our scientific evidence has been used to support the inclusion of athletes with prosthetic legs in NCAA track and field, the Boston Marathon, and the 2012 Olympic Games, which seems very convincing. However, Blake Leeper was still not allowed to compete. Based on the notion that he was too tall and that his prostheses gave him an unfair advantage. I'm disappointed in that decision, but we'll keep publishing scientific research with these remarkable athletes to chip away at biases and assumptions with scientific data. 
One day, I believe that prostheses will not only restore movement, but outperform biological limbs. But the data suggest we are not there yet. We all have personal biases that affect the decisions we make, but we cannot let our gut reactions exclude people who are different than us. Recognizing and addressing our biases is a critical step towards a fair and equitable world. Thank you.